there's a very good example of what we've talked about many times in terms of third-party liability. If you've been a victim of a scam or a fraud or a Ponzi scheme, you may find that the primary fraudster, the person who scammed you out of their money, only has some of your money to give back. When you go through the entire asset search, asset recovery investigation process, maybe you can get back 40, 50 cents on the dollar, maybe 60 cents on the dollar in some cases, but you're gonna be short. And how does that get resolved? Well, like many fraud cases, most of the money that comes to victims, like the Bernie Madoff case, Scott Rosting case, comes from third parties. There are many third parties that even if they weren't directly involved with the scam, enabled that scammer. They helped that fraudster unknowingly to take your money. It could be a bank, it could be an attorney, it could be an advertising company. Sometimes it's a marketing company or employees that allowed that scammer to do as much damage as they did. So in many cases, there's recovery available from those third parties. So part of any investigation is to discover which third parties enabled that scammer to take your money. Maybe it's a website company. Maybe it's a, a, um, uh, a registrar of domain names, right? So here's a perfect example. There was a $1.2 billion, uh, or actually $7 billion Ponzi scheme, and the victims were short $1.2 billion. And the bank, TD Bank, that was involved with this had to pay out. Now, this bank didn't do the actual scam. They're not the ones who took the money. They weren't the Ponzi schemer. They just opened up bank accounts for this scammer. Now, they didn't know that this person was committing fraud. They probably didn't know that the person was doing a Ponzi scheme. But they did maybe not perform enough due diligence. Maybe they missed some paperwork when they let them open the accounts. There's always going to be some deficiency that the third party did unknowingly that allowed that scam to extend or become bigger or last longer. And that's where third party liability comes in. So when you do an investigation into a scam, check out these third parties because without this, look, they have to pay $1.2 billion. And it's not something you have to chase down and find. TD Bank has $1.2 billion, right? The scammer, you might have to chase down all their bank accounts and their real estate. The third parties, they're not hiding their assets. Banks can't hide their assets. They have real estate. They have all the the um, the assets out in plain sight. Plus, many of these third parties have insurance. They have errors and emissions insurance, professional liability insurance. If it's an accountant, an attorney, they're going to have insurance policies that will immediately pay out if they're discovered to have third party liability. So if you are a victim of any kind of a fraud, be sure to include in your investigation in your legal action in your research the observation of what third parties may have liability that owe you money remember we're not attorneys we're not giving you legal advice but this is something that a lot of our clients that are attorneys will look at for their clients to make sure that they're not left out in the dark and don't get all the money that's coming to them that they lost in a scam because some bank or accountant or law firm didn't do their due diligence and let that scammer get away with it and take your money from you. They owe it to you back.